This video will instruct you on what GF Central Plastics believes are the best practices for preparation prior to fusing electrofusion couplings. It reflects procedures that are born out of many years of experience with electrofusion and the latest industry findings. Best practices, as demonstrated in this video, should not be interpreted as the only correct practices. OQ training varies from company to company, and each company is required to validate its procedures. As a trainer or installer, you're obligated to follow your company's instructions. In this video, we'll discuss 10 steps of preparation before fusing an electrofusion coupling. 1. Fittings, tools, and equipment layout. 2. Pipe inspection. 3. Initial water cleaning. 4. Initial marking. 5. Alcohol cleaning. 6. Scribing. 7. Remarking. 8. Peeling. 9. Final marking. 10. Clamping in preparation for fusing. Begin by laying out your tools and equipment on a clean plywood board or a heavy gauge plastic sheet. Do a quick inventory. Make sure everything you need is present, clean, and properly working. The electrofusion fitting should be in the plastic bag. Inspect the pipe for gouges in excess of 10% of the pipe wall, implanted gravel, out of round or out of ovality tolerance, toe-in, etc. Using clean water and a cloth, wash the pipe to a distance of approximately three coupling lengths from the end. If the recommended length is not available, wash the length that is available. Use the coupling as a length indicator and mark two coupling lengths from the pipe end with a permanent grease-free marker. If working with both black and yellow PE, we recommend the use of a gray Sharpie, as gray is visible on both colors. At this point, if the pipe or tubing shows signs of dirt or mud residue, it may be cleaned once more with clean water and a cloth to the full length of the second stab depth as illustrated here. This optional step is more of importance if the pipe or tubing has been directionally bored with the aid of bentonite mud, as result studies have linked bentonite residue on the pipe surface with electrofusion bonding failures. Now, use a clean, low-lint cloth and 90% or greater isopropyl alcohol or a pre-soaked isopropyl towelette to clean the first coupling length mark. Be careful not to contact the alcohol wipe with this mark, as doing so can draw the marker residue into the alcohol zone, creating a potential contaminant. Allow the alcohol on the pipe to dry. We'll be making a stab depth indicator with our marker that's just beyond half the length of the EF coupling. The pipe is scribed on multiple sides with GFCP's Marksman 007. This tool removes roughly six thousands of the pipe wall. The value of this procedure will be demonstrated during the peeling process that follows. With the marker, color in the scribed lines. Then, mark the remainder of the pipe end with the random markings around its circumference as shown. Allow the marker to dry. Line the peeler blade up on the pipe end and turn clockwise. Continue peeling until well past the fusion zone. Note, in this case, the peeler produces a complete ribbon that is frequently broken and removed. This continuous ribbon acts as an indicator that the peeling depth has exceeded the depth of the scribe. The lack of remaining marker confirms that the desired peeling depth has been obtained. Using the coupling as a guide, mark the intended completed stab depth on the pipe equal to half the coupling length. In this demonstration, we've prepared the mating pipe as if it were a repair spool. Note, the repair piece has been cleaned, marked, and peeled. But in this case, the peel length is just greater than the full length of the coupling. The repair spool has also been marked as the half coupling length, but the coupling is slipped over the repair piece to the full depth of the coupling. Once the pipe ends of the main and the repair piece are aligned, the coupling is centered on the pipe segments using the half coupling marks as stab depth indicators. With the coupling roughly centered, the coupling clamp, in this case, the GFCP multi-clamp, is applied and tightened around the pipe. At this point, the stab depth indicators are verified once more and the coupling is ready to connect to the electrofusion processor. Congratulations, you've completed the section on preparing an electrofusion coupling for the fusion process. For comprehensive instructions, please refer to the EF installation manual 
or for more information on George Fisher's Central Plastics EF Fusion System and the assembly of components, visit our website at centralplastics.com. Additionally, hands-on training can be scheduled via the website or by contacting your local GF representative.